Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making local headlines this morning. Heavy rain, even some lightning and thunder waking up parts of San Antonio overnight. We'll get the latest coming up. Plus, a lot of problems for Southwest Airlines as more delays and cancellations are expected today. And outside with live cam under rain cooled skies. Mike is looking ahead to an interesting work week and wait to see some of the temperatures he has going into next weekend. More on that coming up. Good morning, everybody. Let's get the week going. It is Monday, October 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great weekend. And I think the rain is sort of welcome, but boy, did we get a lot. We did, but it was a fast moving system. Here's Mike with more on that. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's pretty much out of here, but uh, out at the airport, inch of rain in less than an hour. Yeah, it was coming down in buckets there and it's moved on out. Cold front as expected, a weak cold front moved on through here. So when you step outside, it's nice and refreshing this morning. Roads are damp. So if you do have to uh, work this morning, I know a lot of uh, schools are most all schools are out for the uh, Columbus Day holiday, as well as a lot of businesses, but just watch out for some of the wet roads out there. Leftover rain is moving in through Nixon, Gonzales, and just really hightailing it on out of here. In behind, temperature is 64 degrees, just about down to the normal low temperature, and the air really, really dried out. It's going to be very, very pleasant throughout the rest of today. Of course, the humidity was okay on Saturday, shot up yesterday. It was a steam bath, and now it's dropped down, but this is not going to last all that long. We do have a nice breeze coming in here out of the uh, northeast and so that's what's pulling in some of this drier air and as far as the allergens mold and ragweed are both on the moderate side we are going to be up to 82 at noon 88 high temperature again low humidity a really nice day just a few degrees above normal but that's all going to change overnight humidity is going to come back on in here a couple of showers tomorrow and midweek we are looking at potentially some very very heavy rain especially Wednesday and Thursday. We'll check out what happens in behind that. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to get ready for the middle part of the week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of moments. Stephen Cavazos, Traffic Authority is here. A couple of big problems, right? Hey, Mike, it's a Monday out there on the roadways. Uh, taking a look right now, I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. We want to first start here. Uh, this is a crash that is involving an 18-wheeler. And as you can see right now, it is a mess out there. We have multiple first responders out there on the scene. And we'll get to Sarah Acosta, who's going to be live there in just a few moments. Moments. But let's first start here with a second crash that's actually happening here off 281 at Hildebrand. Uh, just talked to our friends at Transguide a few moments ago prior to coming up here. They do are telling me that right now these lanes here off 281 are going to be closed right now as first responders obviously work to clear that crash. And it has been a very busy morning on the roadways. But first, we're going to start there with that crash at I-10 at eastbound. Uh, I-10 eastbound, that is, at UTSA Boulevard. You can see that we are seeing a minor buildup right there on the map. But thankfully, it is still very early on to where we're not seen a stretch of that just yet, but we're going to be watching it very closely. Uh, that crash that we just showed you again, 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue, not causing any big delays at this hour. But again, our friends over there at Transguide are telling me you can expect some closures and delays if you're going to be heading out there in the next few moments. A wider look at the map does show that the majority of what we're seeing on the screen is pretty green. So there's some good news in the silver lining to this pretty crazy Monday. But right now, these inbound times are still green across the board to the downtown San Antonio area. So uh, you can't expect any delays if you're going to be traveling in the next few moments. But as always, make sure that you are taking it slow on the roads. We're going to jump back to that crash here off I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. And let's go over to our Sarah Ocosta, who's actually live there on the ground. Sarah, what are you seeing right now? Hey, Stephen. Uh, so we're trying to get this information confirmed by police. But uh, what we know so far, what we're seeing is that we know this accident got called out at around 2.08 uh, this morning here at the eastbound lanes of I-10 and UTSA Boulevard. Now, they haven't shut down that um, I-10. They have about one lane open. So, like you said, it's not causing too much of a backup yet because it still is early. But let me show you what we're seeing. So, that 18-wheeler, you can see, is actually getting pulled off right now as we speak by that wrecker. It looked like it had rode up onto the median, and what it had hit a SUV. You can see is right behind it. Uh, it was lit earlier, but there is a white SUV right behind it that's pretty mangled. So earlier, what we did see is two people had to be extracted from that SUV by firefighters when they arrived on scene. Now, when the people were taken out of the SUV, they seemed to be okay and speaking, but it seems like they were transported to the hospital as precaution. Again, still waiting to get this information confirmed by police. Now, we also did see um, the driver, a male driver of that of that 18-wheeler um, get out 
with a woman and a small child. None of them seem to be injured as well. Uh, it seems that they're, you know, they're just they are checked out by EMS as a precaution, but it doesn't seem like there were major injuries. Again, we need to get that confirmed by police. Now, as for how long this wrecker uh, will be out here trying to tow this 18-wheeler, we're still trying to figure that out. Probably not too long since it's already attached there. But again, we'll keep an eye on this and give you more information as we get it throughout the morning. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Sarah. A firefighter was injured last night after responding to a two-alarm fire on the city's west side. It happened around 7.30 last night in the 400 block of Zarzamora Street. Crews say the fire started in a tire shop and the high wind helped the flames spread to other nearby businesses, a vacant convenience store, and a home used as an office. The flames were contained to those three buildings despite another structure being close by. Crews say firefighters were able to extinguish the fire relatively quickly. One firefighter was injured and was taken to University Hospital. This morning, more than 1,000 Southwest Airlines flights have been canceled across the country and dozens more have been delayed. On Sunday, the airline canceled about 30% of its schedule, according to flight tracker Flight Aware. American Airlines canceled 5% of its flights. Spirit canceled about 4%. Among the hardest hit airports were Denver, Dallas, and Phoenix. Southwest blames the problems on air traffic control issues and bad weather. Southwest's pilots union blames airline management. Some health ex experts are predicting the worst of COVID's Delta-fueled summer surge may be behind us. The latest da data from Johns Hopkins University shows the U.S. averaged nearly 96,000 new cases a day over a week ending Friday. That's a 44% drop from a Delta-driven peak average in mid-September. Meanwhile, the national number of people battling the virus in the hospital is more than 67,000. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, that's a 35% drop from last month. This morning, hundreds of thousands of members of the U.S. military remain unvaccinated as the Pentagon's vaccine mandate deadline approaches. According to the Washington Post, the rate of COVID-19 vaccination among the armed services varies. For instance, vaccine compliance in the active duty Navy is around 90 percent, but for the Marine Corps, it's just 72 percent, though both services share the same November 28th deadline. Lowest overall rates vaccinations are in the Army Reserve and Army National Guard. They're both around 40%. Still, the Pentagon is optimistic that as deadlines approach, most U U.S. service members will carry out their orders to be vaccinated. A nuclear engineer with the U.S. Navy is accused of trying to sell secrets about Navy submarines to a foreign nation. He's now under arrest along with his wife. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, a nuclear engineer for the Navy faces espionage-related charges accused of trying to sell secrets about America's most sophisticated submarines. These fast attack submarines, which incorporate uh, a lot of stealth technology, these submarines uh, cost about $3 billion each. According to the FBI, Jonathan Tebby, who had top security clearance, sent a package of documents to an undisclosed foreign government in April 2020, including a sample of restricted data and instructions on establishing a covert relationship. When the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians or whoever was receiving this gets the information, they can look at this and say, how do we design our submarines and save potentially years of design work? The court documents do not explain how the FBI received the package, but undercover agents posing as spies from a foreign nation allegedly made a deal with Tebby to share the secret information in exchange for $100,000. Investigators say when Tebby dropped off a data card, it was placed inside a peanut butter sandwich. In another instance, they put it in a pack of gum. So as to not give off any sort of uh, indication that this was anything other than a peanut butter sandwich or a pack of gum. Uh, to anybody who might be passing by. Tebby's wife also faces espionage-related charges for allegedly serving as a lookout. The court filing describes her as a humanities teacher in Maryland. The case raises concerns about just how often background checks are completed on people with top security clearance. He's looked into every five years. They do a background check. It's incredibly extensive. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Monday morning, just getting started. 439, about 63 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to have the highlights of last night's preseason matchup between the Spurs and the Orlando Magic. But back outside with live cam, the rain is out. Some cooler air is in. But Mike is talking a significant rain event this week over a couple of days. How much rain could we get? We'll talk about that coming up a little later on in this newscast. 
442 time for a look at morning sports second to last preseason game last night for our Spurs in Orlando taking on the magic fast forward to the third quarter DeJounte Murray hits the baseline jumper he had a game high 18 points five rebounds 25 minutes for Murray Spurs led 81 64 after three fourth quarter rookie Josh Primo hits a three at nine points game was tied at 98 all with two minutes left but Keita Bates Diop nails the game winning triple with 102 left to go. San Antonio wins it by one. 101 to 100. Spurs will wrap up preseason Friday when they host the Houston Rockets at 7 30. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, it took nine months of rehab to be able to return to the game he loves, but here he is, Dak Prescott facing the NFC East rival New York Giants. Take your second quarter, 3 0 Dallas. Dak finds CeeDee Lamb. 49-yard touchdown. Cowboys lead 10-0. Now the fourth quarter, big touchdown for Zeke Elliott, this time from 13 yards out. 34-13 Cowboys. Elliott finished with 110 yards, rushing two total touchdowns midway through the quarter. Tempers flare. Giants receiver Kadarius Toney throws a punch at DeMonte Casey after he was shoved. We show you the injury there to uh, quarterback Daniel Jones of the Giants, knocked out with a uh, concussion. Uh, Tony was ejected after that flare up, which I do not see in these highlights, but by then the game was over. Cowboys win. Great game. They went 44 20. Dallas is now 4 and 1 on the season. All right, next up, the New England Patriots host the Cowboys. Game is Sunday, 3 25 at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. UTSA Roadrunners made history again this weekend, this time by the best start after going 6-0, beating Western Kentucky 52-46. Quarterback Frank Harris threw a school record six touchdowns for 347 yards. He also caught a touchdown pass for a total of seven on the night. Then Clarence Hicks sealed the victory with an interception in the final minute of the game to preserve their 52-46 victory over the Hilltoppers. Up next, this coming Saturday showdown with Rice at the Alamo Dome is set for 5 p.m. And that's a look at sports. Yeah, congrats to UTSA. It's pretty cool. Fantastic start. Very good. Time now is 444 and about 63 degrees. Coming up next, we're hearing from the man who found the three-year-old boy who was lost for days in the woods northwest of Houston. And welcome back. It's 447. The man who found a toddler alive northwest of Houston after being lost in the woods for days is speaking out. ABC's Marcus Moore has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the Texas toddler rescue that's making headlines. A three-year-old found alive in the woods miles away from his family's home days after he went missing. Christopher, is that you? And then he, he, he speaks again. I'm like... Whoa, you're like, praise God. The Good Samaritan who found him, speaking out in an exclusive interview with ABC News. I don't know what to make of it. All I know is he was found safe. When I picked him up, he was still talking. He wasn't shaking. He wasn't nervous. You know, the things I would expect. I, maybe he just sensed I've been found. Landowner Tim Halfen retelling the moments leading up to when he found Christopher Ramirez and what reuniting the toddler with his mother means to him. Coming up at 7 a.m., new details about how the boy went missing and how he's doing this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Marcus Moore, ABC News, Houston. 448. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen, who's been busy over there at the traffic lab. Yeah, you know, if you're going to be heading out in the next few moments, make sure that you are taking it slow uh, because we have a ton of crashes to talk about this morning. Unfortunately, not the way anybody wants to start the new work week. We're going to start here with 281. Uh, as you can see right now, we do have a big bowl of light right there, and that is because we do have first responders on the scene working to clear uh, a crash. Unfortunately, that happened a little bit earlier this morning. I was talking to our friends over at Transguide. Right now, they're telling me that a portion of 281 there is going to be closed. Of course, so first responders can get that crash out of the way and make sure people can get to where they need to be on time and as always safely. But let's bring you to the map right now because we are seeing that uh, delay slowly building there in those southbound lanes of 281. Again, that crash right there in the southbound lanes right at Hildebrand Avenue. Make sure that if you're heading out in the next few moments, you start planning those alternative routes, especially if you're going to be driving through that a little bit later on. But uh, it doesn't stop there. We do have another crash that we told you about a little bit earlier. Sierra Costa is 
live there this morning where an 18 wheeler did in uh, 18 wheeler 18 wheeler crash that would uh, happen a little bit earlier this morning. Again, I 10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard seeing some sort of build up there in the westbound lanes, but it doesn't look too major. We're going to continue to watch that throughout the morning. A third crash also reported right there off loop 1604 eastbound just past lookout road. Uh, we are seeing some sort of build up there as well. We're going to continue to watch these crashes throughout the morning, but again, it has started off pretty busy right now, and Mike was mentioning just of course the roads are still damp in some areas. Looks a little wet out there of 281 at Hildebrandt as well. Just remember, take it slow and we'll go ahead and give you guys all those updates right here on GMSA. Guys, Steve and I was southbound right there at 281 and that's right. And, uh, fire trucks were just pulling up. I went ahead and it's like I should get off at Hildebrand. Yeah. yeah, piece of cake. The problem is, of course, that's a working traffic light, yep. so that's going to jam up a little bit till they get that cleared. Pack your patience. Yes, sir. Thank All you. Right. Yes, thanks, Steve. Rain that we had overnight is pretty much out of here. Mm -hmm. A couple leftover showers off to the east. It was coming down pretty hard and heavy, though. Great picture. The waxing crescent moon. It is going to be right at the uh, kind of first quarter. Looks like halfway in just a couple of days. And we've got still, as Stephen was talking about, wet roads out there this morning. Here's radar. Uh, Gonzalez, you got a couple leftover showers there. This is just some uh, clutter kind of left over in behind it. And yeah, most of the rain was north of 10 and 90. We had some of those pockets where it was an inch, inch and a half um, on the near north side of town, right around the airport, uh, just over an inch of rain. Uh, that was the situation around Live Oak, um, a little bit more than that out there in toward over by Bandera and just to the west of Leon Springs. Again, most of this came in roughly an hour, and that's why it was causing a little bit of minor flooding in places. Also, temperatures have now drop down and the air has dried out very nicely and behind that it was an actual front that moved on through here as expected kind of a weak front the humidity has really been knocked out of here though which is fantastic news we've got dew points that are about 10 15 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday and the low humidity is going to stay in place so it's going to be a really comfortable afternoon but overnight things are going to change rapidly and in a big way and throughout the day tomorrow and then going into Wednesday humidity is really going to start to come back on in here and that's going to feed some potentially heavy rain. So we'll clear out today. Lots of sunshine. Then we'll see clouds tomorrow morning. A couple of showers scattered about the area tomorrow with all that influx of humidity around here throughout the afternoon. A few more showers and thunderstorms and then Tuesday night into Wednesday. We're going to start to see some of these uh, heavier showers and thunderstorms move on in here and the reason for that is we got to look down here in the Pacific Ocean. This is uh, the tropical system Pamela. This is going to be feeding all this moisture. It's going to come on shore and then feed all the moisture across Mexico. And that combined with another feature is going to make for some really heavy rain around here. Here's some of the estimates. I mean, uh, when it's all said and done by late Thursday, perhaps about uh, six inches of rain in portions of the hill country. And then you have the localized heavier amounts on that. So that's definitely going to be an issue as far as flooding, the potential for flooding as we go into especially Wednesday and then overnight into the first part of the day on Thursday. 82, mostly sunny skies today at noon. Really nice day. Northeasterly wind going to be pleasant out there. 88 degrees, a little bit on the warm side compared to normal. And then tomorrow we will have a few showers around here. Then the heavy stuff starts to move on in and it looks like it's going to be Wednesday especially later in the day, overnight into the first part of the day on Thursday. Then we get another front, and that's going to bring in some perfect fall weather for the weekend. Got to get through the midweek, though, first. Well, flash flooding is not new around here. I guess it's time to go ahead and start mentally preparing for yeah. the normal spots to be a problem Yep, over a couple of days. And especially as it's looking right now, hill country. Hill country, mm -hmm. okay. All right, we'll watch out for it. Thank you, Mike. 453, about 63 degrees. Face the final frontier will have to wait a little longer for William Shatner. The details next. We are getting a look at the reviews of the newest James Bond film. Plus, William Shatner will have to wait a little longer to go to the final frontier. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. The reviews are great. The debut, not bad. $56 million for No Time to Die. James Bond. License to kill. Pretty good, actually, for a first place pandemic debut, but Daniel Craig's farewell to James Bond was expected to bow with 60 to $70 million. Add the domestic take, and No Time to Die has already made $313 million bucks globally, but it'll need to earn at least $800 million to turn a profit.
Kim Kardashian West's first time as host gave Saturday Night Live a nice ratings bump. I know. I'm surprised to see me here, too. Compared to last week's season 47 premiere, which posted numbers lower than the previous season's lowest rated shows. Gentlemen, I suggest you beam me aboard. Weather concerns have bumped 90-year-old William Shatner's first trip into space on board Blue Origin's suborbital spacecraft by one day to Wednesday. And Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Daryl Hall turned 75 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now is 4.58, and it's about 63 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll get an update on the more than 1,000 Southwest Airlines flights that have been canceled across the country, and how many are affected here in San Antonio. And taking a look outside with Transky, crews are still working that crash there on 281. We're going to be getting an update from our Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Southwest Airlines is apologizing after canceling nearly 2,000 flights. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. What the airline is saying coming up. Outside with live cam, overnight storms. Mike says things will clear out and then wait to see what's on the forecast for later this week. He wants us to be flood aware. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday the 11th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and a dry weekend because uh, here comes the rain this week. Yeah, later on this week. Mike has more on that and then a pretty significant cool down next weekend. Yeah, that pretty much uh, sums up the forecast there. Uh, we've got, we had the rain overnight and it came down pretty hard and heavy. Picked up just over an inch of rain out there at the airport and a lot of that came in about an hour and most of it was kind of in the northern half of our viewing area right uh, north of 90 and 10. 64 degrees right now. Got a breeze out of the north that's pulling in much drier air and that bottom number, the dew point is at 60, which is right at that threshold. So you drop below that and it's really comfortable. It's nice when you step outside this morning. 88 high temperature today, so we will be slightly on the above normal side, but we'll have low humidity, so it is going to be very comfortable. That will not last very long. However, the aquifer went up half a foot. It should get a big, big recharge when it's all said and done this week, because a lot of that rain is going to be falling in the hill country in the recharge zone. Looking forward to this week and mold and pigweed are both on the, uh, the moderate side radar. We had the heavy storms overnight and boy, they have just kind of hightailed it out of here. There's hardly anything being picked up in our vicinity. Just a couple of little leftover showers right there around uh, say Gonzales and Nixon and then clearing actually out to the west and we'll continue to clear out from west to east. So the rain will end and we'll see more sunshine and a lot of sunshine later on today. A very nice day. Wind out of the north, uh, north to northeast about 10, 15 miles per hour. Humidity is going to be low, but that, like I said, won't last very long because we're going to see the humidity come back in very quickly overnight and a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms tomorrow. Then midweek, especially Wednesday, late overnight into the first part of the day Thursday. We're looking at potentially some very heavy rain, especially in parts of the hill country in behind that will clear out and yeah, good looking fall weekend setting up here. One of the nicest fall weekends we've had since last year, actually, but we got to get through uh, midweek first. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, couple of big accidents. What's the latest, sir? We can call today a messy Monday, Mike. Uh, right now we are taking a look at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. We want to show you this shot first uh, because we do have a 18 wheeler involved crash. It happened a little bit earlier this morning and right now you can see we do have a heavy first response presence out there at this hour. Obviously, a few lanes are blocked off, but we're still seeing some traffic moving through there, at least on one lane. We'll get to that crash here on the map now and show you that right now it's not impacting a lot of traffic. We still see some green out there in those eastbound lanes of I-10 at UTSA Boulevard, but make sure you use caution. Obviously, we know when we see those first responders out there working to clear any scenes involving 18 wheelers, it could take a little while, so be patient out there this morning. A second crash over here off US 281 southbound right at Hildebrand Avenue is also leading to a closure there. Uh, traffic also building out there as we see some yellow starting to show up in those southbound lanes. Make sure that you are driving with caution. And as we jump over here to the northeast side, we do have a third crash off Loop 16 to 4 eastbound just past Lookout Road. We told you about this one a little bit earlier, and I was checking the shots at Transguide. Not seeing any flashing lights out there, but again, make sure you are driving with caution this morning. We have started this week off to a very busy and messy start on the roads, but thankfully, the good news is and the silver line is that these inbound 
down times are almost green across the board. We are still seeing somewhat of a minor slowdown coming in from two uh, pardon me, Lavernia on 87 with 25 minutes at this hour, but everywhere else you should be green to go when things are looking good there. But let's head back to this crash at I 10 at UTSA Boulevard and Sarah Costa is actually live there now and Sarah when we last talked to you, they were clearing out that 18 wheeler. What's it looking like now? Any progress? Uh, a, a little progress, yes and no. So what we heard is around 2 o'clock this morning, uh, an SUV was pinned underneath this 18-wheeler. Now that SUV that was pinned underneath has been towed out this time, but the 18-wheeler, it looked like they moved it off the median, uh, but it's still here and they're still trying to, to tow it away. Uh, also, it looks like crews are cleaning up uh, something off the roads. Uh, earlier, we thought maybe it was diesel oil that was leaking, that spilled from this 18-wheeler, but they're definitely uh, cleaning up something off the roads here. But let's take a look at video from earlier uh, this morning that we got. So we still haven't gotten information confirmed from police, but what we saw was um, an SUV was pinned underneath this 18-wheeler, and the 18-wheeler was, was up and on that median. Now, two people had to be extricated out of that SUV by firefighters. Now, when they were pulled out, they seemed to be okay, but uh, possibly transported to the hospital out of precaution. Now, there was also a male driver on that 18-wheeler along with a woman and a small child also inside that 18 wheeler. All of them seem to be OK as well. Still, again, we are waiting uh, to get that information confirmed by police. Now, looks like the driver of that 18 wheeler and uh, is no longer here on scene, but it that 18 wheeler still here again, pulled off the median by the wrecker. But it does look like crews have uh, maybe about two to three lanes closed. One lane still is open on this eastbound side, but it does look like they are definitely cleaning up something off of the roads here this morning. But we'll just keep it here on air and online, and we'll keep you updated. Uh, now we're going to head over to Katrina, who is at 281 in Hildebrand with another accident. Katrina. Well, good morning, Sarah. This one is one of those things that you can almost let the pictures speak for themselves. If you take a look down there, you can see the 18-wheeler involved in this crash. Uh, not sure how he ended up going the wrong way, but the cab facing the wrong way in the southbound lanes of Highway 281. Uh, the back of that cab, that uh, truck has pretty much exploded. You can see the debris and also the cargo that is spread along the highway. As a result, southbound 281 at Hildebrand is closed. Uh, they have traffic getting off here, but then going through the light and getting right back on 281. So it's only in this immediate area that this closure has taken place. Now, I have not been able to get down there to talk to police and find out exactly what happened. I did shout down to them to find out about the driver driver taken to a hospital. Uh, so at least he uh, did suffer some injuries, but it seems that he is still alive, according to what police were able to shout back up at me. But again, this closure for the foreseeable future and traffic is starting to pick up uh, and slow down just ahead of that uh, closure. But for now, uh, this, this is the situation and we will stay on top of it and keep you advised as to when these lanes open back up. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Yes, thank you very much for the update, Katrina. 508 this morning, Southwest Airlines is apologizing to thousands of frustrated passengers after they canceled 1,800 flights this weekend. Airline officials blamed weather and air traffic control issues. And a look here on FlySanAntonio.com, about 46 Southwest flights are listed as on time, while four are listed as canceled. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. This morning, Southwest Airlines is apologizing to stranded passengers after canceling nearly 2,000 flights in two days. The delayed timeline, you know, it just really throws a wrench in things. Chaotic scenes at airports leaving thousands of travelers frustrated during the busy holiday weekend. In Denver, Ryan Lacey says he waited more than three hours in this line to rebook his flight. We are going Denver to Tampa, and we're not quite sure how we're going to get to Orlando yet. In a memo to staff late Sunday, one Southwest official apologizing to employees, writing, I'm sorry for the struggles that you and our customers are experiencing once again. Among the hardest hit airports, Denver, Baltimore, Dallas, and Phoenix. 
Southwest initially blamed bad weather and air traffic control, but the FAA says there have been no major air traffic control issues since Friday. All of the cancellations are Southwest, and none of the other flights are from other airlines. According to FlightAware, the Southwest cancellations Sunday amounted to around 29% of the airline's schedule. Others, including Allegiant, American and Spirit, also canceled flights, but far fewer. It's just the latest major disruption for Southwest after staffing shortages fueled delays this summer. Southwest Pilots Union is blaming airline management for the cancellations. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And time now is 510 and it's about 63 degrees out there. Still ahead, details on Facebook's new controls aimed at keeping kids away from harmful content on Instagram. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, not too bad. Lower 60s right now after all that rain we got, but it kind of moved up. We'll be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect today and for the rest of your week. Welcome back. Just about 514 people living in the Fox Grove neighborhood off 281 and Evans in North Bear County are fed up with a string of car burglaries that have happened in their community. Bear County Sheriff's deputies responded to several car thefts and burglaries in just a single day last month. And the vice president of the Fox Grove Homeowners Association says they have seen an increase in vandalism also. The culprits can be seen on camera walking driveway to driveway and pulling on car doors to see if they can get in. It's very worrisome and as a member of the HOA board it's very difficult to figure out how to solve the issue for so many different people in our, in our neighborhood. Now to combat the issue, the community's established a highly active neighborhood watch. They're encouraging residents to park cars in garages, remove all important items, and most important of all, lock your car doors every single time. And time now is 514 and it's about 63 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, TikTok expanding its service from smartphones to some smart TVs. We're for those who love to discover, who know an open mind is the only kind, who are their own personal stylist, who know where to escape, even just for a moment, who don't need a fortune to find a gem, and who know when you spend less, you can discover even more and never, ever stop discovering. Spend less, discover more at TJ Maxx. Steamer now will clean your home and you'll say, wow. With clean, fresh ingredients, Panera's new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread is a mouth-watering explosion of yes. Craft, yes. Hardiness, yes. Living life to the flavor fullest, heck yes. Panera, live your yes. Now $1 delivery. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook says it will implement new tools to increase transparency and safety. It comes after a whistleblower told Congress last week that the company ignored concerns about the impact of social media on teens. The company says the new feature will prompt teens to take a break from Instagram and will also nudge teens if they're repeatedly looking at the same harmful content. TikTok is now on LG TVs. The video platform launched the app in Europe on LG's newest smart TVs. The kickoff is taking place in the UK, Germany and France before making its way to the U.S. And want to tune your guitar? Try Google Search. The function now sports a built-in tuner. Just play a string into the microphone on your phone or computer. Google Tuner detects the notes you're hoping for, then advises whether you should tune up or tune down, unless, of course, you're playing air guitar, which is always in tune. Those are your tech bites. Rock on. Have a great day. The notes you're hoping for. It tunes the notes you're hoping, hoping for. for. Yes. Yeah, I like that. So the never-ending quest for being in tune. Yeah, well, you can only hope. Let's uh, talk weather coming up. First up, we've got uh, traffic expert Stephen Cavazos. Good morning. Yeah, traffic's definitely out of tune this morning. Lots of situations <laughs> happening right now. 281 at Hildebrand seems to be the big problem at this hour. Uh, we're taking a look there right now. You see traffic moving right nice and smoothly there in those northbound lanes just behind me. A few folks out there. Traffic's still light, but the big problem over in the southbound lanes. You can see right now from this shot, we got some flashing lights. Even over there in the distance, we have some first responders out there working to clear up and pick up some debris after that crash was 
reported a little bit earlier this morning, but our Katrina Wilbur has been live there this morning and has all those updates for us. But as you can imagine, it is a mess out there and you can take a look right there at the map 21 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue is where we're starting to see that buildup of traffic developing there with the orange that we're seeing in those southbound lanes. Uh, take it easy out there and make sure you pack your patience this morning because the roads are a mess. We still have this situation happening off I 10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. Sarah Coast is actually live out there this morning as well. We know this is involving an 18 wheeler. Uh, right now we are not seeing any impact or delays with traffic again very early on, but as always make sure you are driving with caution this morning and make sure you're checking those vehicles because we do have a stall reported there off Loop 410 eastbound at Harry Wurzbach Parkway and it's definitely a day you do not want to be stranded on the roadways. We know that the roads are still somewhat damp and wet in certain areas, but uh, with these crashes reported, you, of course, you are going to want to drive with caution this morning. But again, the big thing is going to be here of 21 at Hildebrand. And just a reminder, uh, they have closed a portion of that highway, so first responders could get that crashing cleared out. Make sure that you're driving with caution. And I know that, Mark, you mentioned you exited uh, Hildebrand Avenue a little mm -hmm. bit earlier this morning on your way to work. Uh, just be a mess out there this morning. Yeah, that incident had just happened, and I saw a bunch of flashing lights. I'm like, eh, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Yeah, Good smart thing um, to do. So uh, it's a bad situation, but if anything, it happened at a good spot because the Hildebrand exit is right there before that curve where you see that rig on its side right now. That's good advice. Good. I'm kind of hoping, Stephen, all this gets wrapped up by 7, but the one on 281 looks like it's going to be there even yeah, longer than yeah. that. And, wow. and we did send a push alert out just if you're anyone that's heading out uh, in the next few moments to so make sure you have your phones handy with you this morning. Thank you, sir. We appreciate well, that. One thing working in our favor, I guess you could say, is because it's Columbus Day, so schools are that out and true. maybe yeah. some, not as many folks are, are going to work this morning. Traffic should theoretically yeah. be lighter. You're right. Hopefully so. Still uh, damp roads. I love this picture. Uh, just seeing a kite fly and beautiful stars and stripes up there. Yes, it was great weather yesterday, except for the fact that the humidity was really high yesterday, but it has dropped down. Still looks to be a little bit wet over there at uh, 410 by the airport. Most all of the rain has ended. Maybe a couple leftover showers in Carnes County over there around Gonzales, but this is all continuing to work its way off to the east. And actually, there has been some clearing reported out in portions of the hill country right now. Uh, pretty much low 60s on average. Lotus is at 56 right now, and these numbers really dropped off from yesterday. As a matter of fact, 11 degrees lower for a dew point than what it was even at this time yesterday. 27 degrees lower for a dew point in uh, Rock Springs, 23 in Spotford. So much drier air, very fall-like air has come on in here. It's not going to last long, though, because the humidity, it, it's going to be nice throughout the rest of today, but it will definitely go up, and it's going to be very high throughout the middle portion of the week. That's going to help to feed some uh, potentially heavy showers and thunderstorms. Then it's going to drop off by the weekend and we've got a great fall weekend setting up. We added through the middle part of the week first and there is the potential for very heavy rain, flooding rain upwards of six inches or even more than that in portions of the hill country. And as of right now, that's where it looks like the lion's share of the rain is going to be. But again, if this line moves just you know, not far to the east, then here in town, we could be seeing very, very heavy rain as it stands. Uh, inch, couple of inches of rain is obviously possible. We're going to have a beautiful day today. Then overnight with the humidity coming back in here, a couple of showers going to be possible throughout the uh, morning hours tomorrow and going into tomorrow evening. Then some showers Wednesday and it's really the overnight into early Thursday. It's looking like that there's going to be that period between say Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon with the heaviest rain and this computer model obviously has it out there in portions of the hill country that will work its way across the area throughout the day on Thursday and then we're going to be clearing out in behind that. So forecast today are going to be up to 82 degrees at noon. Mostly sunny skies. Again, a good looking day. We've got a nice northeasterly breeze about 10 to 15 miles per hour pulling in that dry air 88 high High temperature today, mostly sunny skies, a couple of showers around tomorrow. Then the heavy rain moves on in here, <clears throat> excuse me, on Wednesday, especially later in the day, Wednesday, Wednesday night, overnight in through Thursday, and we'll clear out in behind that. If you left over clouds on Friday, great looking weekend. I mean, it's going to be almost chilly in the morning over the weekend, but again, we've got to just focus on the middle part of the weekend. Obviously, the exact timing and exactly who's going to get the most rain going to be sorted out even later on today, tomorrow. So obviously we continue watching. Well, we know you guys will keep us yep. updated 24 seven yep. as we go into the middle part of the week. Right. All right. Well, watch out for it. That's a lot of rain that we didn't have over the weekend. So now right. we look forward to it. Thank you, Mike. 524, about 63 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, a first look at Willy Wonka in the new prequel film. Plus, 
William Shatner's launch gets delayed. Here's your first look at Timothy Chalamet as Wonka. The actor posted the pic on social media. The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory prequel is now shooting in London. Are you under control? Are you? No. Jessica Chastain leads an all-star cast in The 355, about female operatives who band together to stop a mercenary from using a top-secret weapon. This is the first trailer for the globe-trotting adventure, which also stars Dion Kruger and Oscar winners Lupita Nyong'o and Penelope Cruz. The 355 hits theaters January 7th. And Mr. Shatner looking this way, please. It'll be a bit longer than expected before William Shatner boldly goes where no nonagenarian has gone before. Windy weather forecast for Tuesday has prompted Blue Origin to bump the Star Trek legend's suborbital flight until Wednesday. Captain Kirk has waited 90 years to really go into space. He can wait one more day. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 63 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Southwest Airlines canceled more than 1,800 flights this weekend. How the airline is adjusting to make sure passengers get to where they need to go. Plus, we'll tell you how teachers and other school support staff can get a free meal from McDonald's today. And will you be ready to retire when that time comes? Find out on GMSA at 6. Firefighters had to extract two people out of an SUV after it was pinned under an 18-wheeler early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa at I-10 and UTSA Boulevard with the latest. And after a dry weekend, we saw some rain last night. Right now we're at 63 degrees. We're off to a nice start to your day. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 11th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a good weekend. Now we're prepared for, well, maybe not any more rain today. Looks like it kind of stopped for today, but just later on. Uh, buckets of rain later this week. Here's Mike. Yeah, we had, uh, well, first of all, just kind of rehashing the weekend. Great on Saturday. Sunday, wow, yesterday the humidity really came back up. Now it is uh, pretty much out of the picture. We had the front move through overnight. That touched off those showers and thunderstorms. We're at 64 right now, almost down to the normal low temperature. Dew points at 60. Really comfortable out there. You're gonna, it's nice and refreshing when you open up the door. Northerly wind at 8 miles per hour. And as far as radar, uh, that's about it. Just a few little straggling showers. But when it came through, especially in the northern half of our area, uh, even northern part of San Antonio Airport picked up about uh, almost an inch and a tenth in roughly an hour just after that, or just a little bit longer than that, I should say. Mold and uh, ragweed are both on the moderate side. It's going to be a fantastic day. Temperatures will make it up into the mid and upper 80s, so slightly above normal. But with low humidity, it's going to be a comfortable day. That's not going to last long because overnight the humidity is going to come back in here and it's really going to be coming in throughout the day tomorrow. That's going to be touching off a couple of showers around the area, even one or two tomorrow morning and then throughout the afternoon. Then we got to look out for Wednesday and Thursday. That's when the really heavy stuff moves on in here. Details on that and what to expect after that for next weekend. That's coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos and go ahead talk about the mess out there. <laughs> it's a messy Monday, Mike, and check out this shot at Trans Guy behind me. Not something you see every day. Uh, it looks like that big rig that we're talking about is now overturned on its side there as we have some flashing lights. First responders still out there working to clear that messy scene out there of 281 at Hildebrand. We can tell you right now that this portion of 281 southbound has been closed off for quite a while. Uh, this crash came in a little bit earlier in the morning, but uh, it looks like it is going to take a while to get this cleared out. So make sure you have that patience with a cup of coffee this morning because we are seeing the traffic starting to build here according to our map. Again, right there in the southbound lanes of 281 at Hildebrand, seeing that building up, but unfortunately not the only issue we We've spotted this morning. Let's take a jump up here to I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard, where Sarah Costa has been there live this morning. Or involved with an 18-wheeler involved crash. Now, as we last saw, and she was telling us it's still pretty busy out there. So make sure you are driving safely, and make sure you also are checking those vehicles. While we had did have a stall that cleared out a little while ago, we have a new one that popped up right there of Loop 410 southbound, right at East Houston Street. Monday starting off to be pretty busy out on the roadways, but for these inbound times, green across across the board. This is our silver lining this morning. You're not going to have any problems at this hour if you're traveling to the downtown San Antonio area from any of our neighboring communities. So that's the good news there. But let's jump back to this crash there at 281 at Hildebrand. Our Katrina Weber's actually live there this morning. And Katrina, we were seeing that some of the traffic was building up there on the map. Is that what you're seeing right now? 
Definitely. I can give you a look at that traffic starting to back up here. Uh, this is 281 again, southbound near Hildebrand. This is where the closure is. You can see that traffic coming there uh, on the access road. Tra they are directing traffic onto the access road and then through the light and continuing south on 281. This is all because of this crash here at Hildebrand. Take a look at that 18-wheeler. It's amazing that anyone lived through that, but police tell me the driver is in the hospital. Somehow, uh, we don't know the details because we haven't been able to get down there and talk to them, but somehow that 18-wheeler ended up facing the wrong way. The trailer portion is just gone, destroyed. Uh, some of the debris is scattered all over the highway, and that's the reason for the closure, which affects just this immediate area near Hildebrand. Uh, this has been going on since at least 4 o'clock or so this morning. We did notice in the last half hour that a flatbed uh, tow truck showed up, but I'm not really sure how much good that will do because there's a lot of debris here to be towed away before police can reopen this road. So this will continue as far as we can see uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we are just monitoring this thing and we'll let you know as soon as it looks like they're going to open this back up. But if there's another way to get downtown for you, you might want to take that this morning as traffic is getting heavy now. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm Sarah Costa. We are on I-10 on I-10 and UTSA Boulevard. Uh, you can see this accident right behind me. It's been going on since 2 o'clock this morning and involved an SUV that was pinned underneath that 18-wheeler that you're looking at right there. So that SUV already towed off. 18-wheeler going to be towed off. Pretty soon here, uh, traffic is down to one lane, but hopefully within the next 15 minutes or so, uh, it looks like they're going to probably open this back up, but we don't have information confirmed from police at this time. But what we saw earlier this morning was that SUV that was pinned underneath that 18 wheeler. Two people were extracted by firefighters. They seemed to be OK. They were walking and talking, but they were probably transported to the hospital out of precaution. Again, still waiting to get that confirmed. Also, we saw a male driver and a female get out of that 18 wheeler with a small child. All of them seem to be OK as well. Uh, we'll also get that confirmed hopefully later this morning from police. It also seemed that they were cleaning up maybe diesel, some kind some kind of something that spilled on the road. Uh, that's what crews continue to do right now. But it looks like they're about to tow off this 18 wheeler. It was up on that median earlier this morning. We got here about an hour and a half ago. They since have pulled it down, hopefully about to tow it away and open up all the lanes here on eastbound 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Just stay with us on air and online and we'll keep you posted throughout the morning. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. In your morning headlines, Southwest Airlines is canceling flights again today, leaving people all over the country stranded. So far this morning, just a small impact here in San Antonio. Let's take a look right now on FlySanAntonio.com. About 46 Southwest flights are listed as on time. Four, only four, are listed as canceled. So what's been causing the issue? CNN's Britt Conway reports the answer depends on who you ask. Couldn't even sleep last night, really, um, just because we didn't know what was going to happen. Levi Stinson's story is one of thousands right now. Southwest Airlines passengers stranded because their flights were canceled or delayed. Now they wait in lines at airports and on the line with Southwest. I have been on the phone since 4.30 this morning on hold. On Saturday, more than 800 flights were canceled. Sunday, it was over 1,000, along with more than 1,000 delays each day. Southwest blamed air traffic control problems and disruptive weather along with staffing issues in Florida. But some customers aren't buying it. There's no explanation for this problem. So I suspect that Southwest isn't being totally honest with us. Fort Lauderdale International said the delays were due to poor weather up north. The FAA says issues related to traffic control or staffing only happened for a few hours Friday night and continued scheduling challenges for some airlines were because of aircraft and crews being out of place. There's been speculation about a pilot walkout after Southwest issued a vaccine mandate for employees last week. But the Southwest Airlines Pilots Association says that's not the case. Quote, we can say with confidence that our pilots are not participating in any official or unofficial job actions. But these passengers are officially frustrated. There were no other flights available. I started looking through and there's just nothing, nothing, nothing. When I'll get there, I don't know. I'm Britt Conway reporting. 
Several reported tornadoes have ripped through Oklahoma, causing damage overnight. The severe weather system also brought heavy rain, lightning, and wind to parts of Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, and parts of Texas. News outlets report a possible tornado struck Coeta, Oklahoma late last night, causing significant damage to a high school, some homes, and a gas station. A hailstorm earlier in the evening caused damage to homes, cars, and businesses in Norman. No deaths or injuries were immediately reported. Right now it is about 540, 63 degrees. And still ahead, McDonald's has a special promotion for teachers and school support staff starting today. Outside with live cam, storms overnight, rain cooled skies this morning. Not bad out there, but the uh, weather forecast is all over the place for the week. Mike has more coming up. Welcome back. Just about 543 there on Capitol Hill. There have been recent discussions about everything from the debt ceiling to those high price spending bills and infrastructure bill. So what exactly does that mean for us here in San Antonio? Two local congressmen joined leading SA this weekend to break it all down. Yes, we were joined by Congressman Henry Cuellar and Congressman Tony Gonzalez, a member of each respective party. We talked about a lot. We had good discussions about what happened on Capitol Hill. The latest update on the discussions over the debt ceiling and what could happen in December. We also talked about the spending bill and the border. Take a listen to what the two congressmen had to say. If one thing that, that this does is uh, it gets both lawmaker, all lawmakers to come together and have a discussion on spending as well, you know, to essentially go, you know, in your household, if, if your spouse or you are spending too much money, you have that uncomfortable conversation to go, what are we spending our money on? If this, if this uh, debt limit isn't increased, What's, what we're going to see is a default, which will impact everybody, last thing any of us want to see. I'll tell you, Max and Sarah, I was not in the room when somebody came up with $3.5 trillion. Some people got that number and they want to fill it up with taxes and they want to fill it up with spending. That's not the way we do a budget. We look at what are the necessities that we need to look at, what can we afford, and then we address that. You can watch both full interviews right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. We'll see you next Sunday, guys. Back to you. All right, time now is 544, and it's about 63 degrees out there. Next up, we'll tell you how teachers can get a free meal from participating McDonald's today. And welcome back. It's 547. In your morning consumer headlines starting today, teachers can get a free breakfast from McDonald's. Teachers, along with administrators and school staff, are eligible for the thank you meals. You just have to show your work ID. Then you can get hash browns and one of three sandwiches, plus a free drink. The promotion lasts all week long. McDonald's gave away 12 million free thank you meals to first responders and healthcare workers last year. It is a first for Netflix. They've teamed up with Walmart to create a digital storefront. It's the first time the streaming service has done that with a national retailer. The Netflix section on Walmart's website is stocked with products connected to Netflix shows like Stranger Things and the super popular right now Squid Game. And there's still a lot of problems on 281. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cabasas. Yeah, the morning commute is not shaping up to look nice. Uh, so we take a look here at 281 at Hildebrandt. Uh, we told you this, Hildebrandt that is, we showed you this a little bit earlier. That it looks like that trailer is uh, getting ready to be turned over upright. Uh, it's right now causing a mess of problems out there in those southbound lanes. Northbound lanes are looking pretty good. You can see we have traffic still pretty light this morning, so that's the positive news. But let's get to that map and show you how things are shaping up because that red is starting starting to build again right there in those southbound lanes. A little bit of yellow further back there up to almost, but 281 southbound right at Hildebrand Avenue is where that crash has been detected. Uh, Katrina Weber was out there a little bit earlier this morning. She's they've been there live all morning long. And as she showed you, it is a mess out there. Tons of debris on the road, so make sure that you're planning those alternative routes. And if you're going to be exiting Hildebrand, be prepared for slowdowns because that's what we were seeing out there a little bit earlier. Uh, Sarah Costa actually was live out there off this crash off I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. Seeing a buildup of traffic there as well. Uh, this is involving an 18 wheeler as you just saw if you're with us a little bit earlier still a mess of problems out on the roadway and the stalls continue. We have one right there off loop 16 to 4 eastbound right at Lock Hill Selma Road not too far from where that crash occurred. Doesn't stop there. We have another one right reported there off loop 410 eastbound at Broadway Street. So as you mentioned Monday morning guys is shaping it up to be pretty messy on the roadways right now and as we take one last look at this shot at Transguide, this is what we're going to continue to monitor throughout this morning and then we know we're getting closer to 
into the morning rush hour. It could be a mess as we start to see the day progress. That Hildebrand intersection <coughs> where people are now filing through yep. off of southbound 281. I was kind of hoping maybe they were directing traffic there, but in the background of Katrina's shot, it looks like everybody's at the mercy of the traffic light right. still. Yeah. So, so just keep that in mind. Factor that in. Yes, but like you said, Mike, it's a good thing that a lot of people have today off, or at least the True. teachers, so maybe there won't be a the traffic there. Exactly, yeah, and, and a lot of folks have the day off again for, for Columbus Day today. So love this uh, picture, beautiful shot of the Tower of the Americas taken by a drone looking off kind of to the north northeast up there. And uh, this isn't a bad picture either. We should have a decent sunrise this morning. We've got some clouds left over, obviously, but there is actually some clear skies being reported out to the west. And rain is all but over. A couple of straggling showers there right in and around uh, Gonzales. Temperature uh, has Drop down. The humidity really dropped down compared to yesterday with these winds coming in here out of the north right now. And it's going to stay very pleasant throughout the day, but it comes back in and then some, it seems like, throughout the day tomorrow. Dew point temperatures are really going to be surging up and they're not going to be dropping down at all. And that's going to be feeding some showers. We'll probably have a couple of them around tomorrow morning and then especially uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then we get into Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday. That's when we're looking at the heavy, heavy rain. And some of the estimates are upwards of, say, six inches of rain uh, in portions of the hill country and obviously lesser amounts off to the east. But this is not yet written in stone. This could actually waver just a little bit depending on the actual path and where all the moisture is is coming on in here and that's going to be um, from a tropical system in the Pacific Ocean. It is Pamela and that's going to be tossing all the moisture across Mexico and coming right in on top of us in combination with the front that's going to try and work on through the area. So throughout the afternoon tomorrow a couple of scattered showers around. And then Wednesday, we'll start to see more of them, especially later on in the day, Wednesday, Wednesday night, and then into early Thursday morning. And that front will sweep across the area and keep the rain around here. I think we clear out then later Thursday and a few clouds left over Friday, but should be a good looking then going into the weekend as well. So here's what's going on. We've got the weak little front that moved on through here overnight associated with that low and then high down there and that low coming in here. That's the tropical system well down to the uh, the south there at the bottom of your screen. That's what's going to be throwing the moisture into the area and that will be the case Wednesday and Thursday again in combination with a front that's going to be sliding on through here. So those two features will provide for the very heavy rain Wednesday overnight into Thursday and then it starts to uh, clear on out and that front that's moving on through here is going to give us some fantastic fall weather for the weekend. We're going to have nice pleasant conditions temperatures only in the 70s for high temperatures and lows down in the lower 50s. So some of the coolest air we've seen around here in a while. 82 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, high temperature up to 88. So we will be just a couple of degrees above normal low humidity, though. It's going to be a very nice day that will all change, though, overnight with the humidity really surging back on in here. A couple of showers going to be possible tomorrow. And then uh, throughout the day, a few showers up to 90, very humid. Same thing on Wednesday. The rain will really start to pick up then Wednesday later in the day, nighttime overnight into Thursday. Again, potentially some flooding rain, especially in parts of the hill country as it's looking right now. We'll clear on out a couple leftover clouds, maybe a straggling shower on Friday and then a beautiful fall weekend is setting up. Got to make it through the mid part of the week, though. All right, but still looking forward to that weekend. Yeah, weekend's going to be great. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 553, about 63 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, 984, fireball eight, daily four, 1575, fireball zero. Cash five numbers, two, seven, 13, 14, 15, lotto Texas, three, nine, 17, 18, 35, 45, and Powerball, let's take a look at those numbers. 12, 17, 30, 45, 62. Powerball was five, power play two. We'll be right back. What'd you say? The Many Saints of Newark fell to fifth place in its sophomore weekend, stealing away with one and a half million dollars. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings made $4.2 million for fourth place and a domestic total of $212 million. The Adams Family 2 dropped from second to third, scaring up $10 million. Yeah. 
Venom Let There Be Carnage dropped dramatically from its huge debut weekend, but $32 million was enough for second place and a 10-day domestic total of $142 million. No Time to Die finally reached theaters and debuted number one with a solid, if not spectacular, $56 million. MGM says 25% of moviegoers surveyed say they made the long-delayed Bond flick their first movie ticket purchase since the pandemic began. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Still ahead on GMSA this morning, Fort Hood officials say a soldier who was missing last week has been found. We'll have some details. And Transguide right now, a couple of major traffic trouble spots right now. This is affecting traffic. The main lanes closed southbound 281. You will have to exit at Hildebrand. This incident's been there for a while and will continue to be. Stephen Cavazos will have the latest coming up. What began as an especially bad morning for a big rig driver has many others going out of their way. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the latest on the situation at 281 and Hildebrand coming up. Southwest Airlines is apologizing after canceling nearly 2,000 flights. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. What the airline is saying coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting the day in the lower 60s. Pretty pleasant after all that rain we got last night. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 11th. This crew has to get up pretty early, but Mother Nature tried to get us up even earlier. I know it was very loud overnight. Uh, a lot of people maybe didn't get enough sleep, but a lot of people maybe got to sleep in with that extended weekend for some of you out there. That's true. So it is a long holiday weekend for some folks out there. Mike joins us now and those storms rolled through pretty quickly overnight. Mike, but you said they dropped a ton of rain in places. The airport picked up just over an inch of rain mm -hmm. and a lot of that fell in about an hour or a little bit longer than an hour. And what's just interesting too is the front that, that produced all that, even going back to Friday, I mean, the timing was late last night, early this morning, and that worked out perfectly. Now the next front's gonna be moving through uh, later on this week, and that's the one that's gonna produce, uh, that in combination with another feature, gonna produce potentially very heavy rain. But for right now, yeah, the rain has ended. Roads may still be on the damp side, could have a couple little, you know, flooded spots here on the north side because that's where the majority of the rain fell in northern part of the Bear County and northern part of our viewing area. Temperatures in the hill country, uh, 60 Kerrville, same thing Fredericksburg, 63 Rock Springs. That's what the temperature is in San Antonio. And there's the leftover rain. It's all but ended a few uh, straggling showers in eastern Gonzales County. There's actually a little bit of clearing being reported out in parts of the hill country. Mold and ragweed are both on the uh, moderate side. Temperature. About, uh, about steady right now because we still have some cloud cover out there and even though the humidity has dropped down relative to the temperature, it's uh, kind of high, so therefore we can't drop any lower than that. But uh, still pleasant temperature, about normal. Wind out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and that's going to continue to keep the dry air in here throughout the rest of today. So it's going to be a good-looking day, mostly sunny skies, and just get out and enjoy it because it won't last long. It's all going to be changing overnight. Humidity is going to surge back into the area. We'll have a couple of showers around here. Then we've got the heavy rain moving in in midweek. More on that and then a look ahead to a really nice weekend upcoming. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, it has not been a holiday on the roads today. Big problems. Not at all, Mike. And you know, a lot of people don't have the things to look forward to, especially I mean, in terms of the roadways because they are a mess right now. Uh, we showed you this shot at Transguide. We've been showing it to you all morning long. You can see there we do have a trailer that looks like that they are trying to top it over upright. And that is because this crash occurred a little bit earlier this morning, obviously leading to some big delays and we are already seeing a few more first responders making the scene out there right now. Unclear how long they're going to be out there this morning, but obviously you're going to want to prepare accordingly, especially if you're still at home and this is a way you travel through the morning commute. So let's take a look right now at our map at 21 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue is where that crash was detected. You can see that traffic just continues to build, especially now that we are inching closer to that morning rush right now at 603. Looks like you can expect some slowdowns out there uh, just north of downtown but jumping up here, the good news is this crash that we told you about a little bit earlier involving an 18 wheeler 
It looks like it is clearing out. There may be one or two first responders still out there, but thankfully the scene has cleared. Our Sarah Costa and Katrina Weber have been live at these scenes throughout the morning. These are the type of mornings where we're really thankful for our crews getting out there to get the information for us. And as we take a look, though, make sure you are checking those those vehicles because we do have a stall that has been detected there off Loop 410 eastbound at Broadway Street. It is shaping up to be quite the busy morning here, and we know we can expect things to get a little bit busier if people are not taking it easy out on the roadways. But check out these inbound times. We are starting to see a little bit of a build up there off 281 coming in from Boulevardy with right now the drive time looking at 33 minutes at this hour. So again, be prepared for those slowdowns. But for now, our Katrina Weber, as we just mentioned, is live out there off 281 at Hildebrand. How's it looking? Well, slow going here on the access road at southbound 281 and Hildebrand. You can see that traffic, a long line of traffic that was forced off the highway onto that access road. Now they go through the light and then get right back on the highway, but this area is shut down all because of what is happening here on the main lanes. There was an 18 wheeler, a big rig that uh, appears to have somehow turned around going the wrong way. Uh, crashed, looks like it crashed into the wall perhaps. And then the back end of that, that whole trailer just came apart with all of that debris, all of the cargo spread along the highway here. And that's the reason for the closure. Uh, according to what I was able to hear from police, we shouted down back and forth to each other uh, from up here on the highway. They told me that the driver is in the hospital, which is pretty amazing when you see uh, the extent of the damage here. Now, as you can see, coming into play, there is a flatbed uh, tow truck here. Not sure how much this is going to help because there's a lot of debris down there to pick up. But at least that's a sign that perhaps something is going to happen here now. And we will stay here and keep you posted as to when this reopens. But for now, traffic diverted onto the access road in this area near 281 in Hildebrand. Reporting live just north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. New this morning, firefighters are still trying to figure out what sparked a fire at a south side home. It happened around 1 this morning in the 800 block of Crystal near I-35 and Division Avenue. Crews were able to put out the flames quickly and get everyone out of that home, including a dog. No one was hurt. However, damages are estimated at around $100,000, and we are told the home is a total loss. A San Antonio firefighter is recovering this morning after battling this west side fire. Happened around 7.30 last night in the 400 block of Zarzamora. The fire began at a tire shop before it spread to two nearby buildings. SAFD was able to put out the flames quickly, but one firefighter was hit with embers. That firefighter was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. No one else was hurt, and the cause of the fire is still unknown this morning. Speaking of this morning, Texas-based Southwest Airlines is apologizing to thousands of frustrated passengers after it canceled at least 1,800 flights this weekend. Airline officials blame weather and air traffic control issues. And right now on FlySanAntonio.com, about 46 Southwest flights are listed as on time, while four are listed as canceled. AZB's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. This morning, Southwest Airlines is apologizing to stranded passengers after canceling nearly 2,000 flights in two days. The delayed timeline, you know, it just really throws a wrench in things. Chaotic scenes at airports leaving thousands of travelers frustrated during the busy holiday weekend. In Denver, Ryan Lacey says he waited more than three hours in this line to rebook his flight. We are going Denver to Tampa and we're not quite sure how we're going to get to Orlando yet. In a memo to staff late Sunday, one Southwest official apologizing to employees, writing, I'm sorry for the struggles that you and our customers are experiencing once again. Among the hardest hit airports, Denver, Baltimore, Dallas and Phoenix. Southwest initially blamed bad weather and air traffic control, but the FAA says there have been no major air traffic control issues since Friday. All of the cancellations are Southwest and none of the other flights are from other airlines. According to FlightAware, the Southwest cancellations Sunday amounted to around 29% of the airline's schedule. Others, including Allegiant, American and Spirit, also canceled flights, but far fewer. It's just the latest major disruption for Southwest after staffing shortages fueled delays this summer. Southwest Pilots Union is blaming airline management for the cancellations. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. 
Now to Southern California, where Huntington Beach is reopening today following last week's oil spill. Officials there ran tests, didn't find any oil in the water. People had been kept away after the spill dumped at least 25,000 gallons of oil into the ocean. In your morning consumer headlines, tight supply chains around the world have some of America's biggest retailers getting into the shipping business. Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, and Target, all among companies that are now chartering their own cargo ships to try and make sure they can get shelves stocked for the holidays. While the ships are smaller, they have the flexibility to bypass some of the congested ports and get their goods unloaded. And a first for Netflix has teamed up with Walmart to create a digital storefront. For the first time, the streaming service has done that with a national retailer. Uh, let's see, the Netflix section on Walmart's website is stocked with products connected to Netflix shows like Stranger Things and the super popular Squid Game. And time now, it's 6.09 and it's about 62 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, Cowboys continue to defeat their opponents in dominating fashion. We'll have a wrap up from NFL Sunday. And just ahead, we're gonna tell you why a nuclear engineer for the US Navy is facing espionage related charges. And outside with live cam. Rain cooled skies out there. It's very, very nice right now, but we are on alert for what could be some significant rainfall later this week. Mike has more coming up. Now a story that could be straight out of a James Bond movie or a Tom Clancy novel. A nuclear engineer with the U.S. Navy accused of trying to sell secrets about Navy submarines to a foreign nation. He's now under arrest along with his wife. ABC's Andrew Jimbert has the details. This morning, a nuclear engineer for the Navy faces espionage-related charges accused of trying to sell secrets about America's most sophisticated submarines. These fast attack submarines, which incorporate uh, a lot of stealth technology, these submarines uh, cost about $3 billion each. According to the FBI, Jonathan Tebby, who had top security clearance, sent a package of documents to an undisclosed foreign government in April 2020, including a sample of restricted data and instructions on establishing a covert relationship. When the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians or whoever was receiving this gets the information, they can look at this and say, how do we design our submarines and save potentially years of design work? The court documents do not explain how the FBI received the package, but undercover agents posing as spies from a foreign nation allegedly made a deal with Tebby to share the secret information in exchange for $100,000. Investigators say when Tebby dropped off a data card, it was placed inside a peanut butter sandwich. In another instance, they put it in a pack of gum. So as to not give off any sort of uh, indication that this was anything other than a peanut butter sandwich or a pack of gum uh, to anybody who might be passing by. Tebby's wife also faces espionage related charges for allegedly serving as a lookout. The court filing describes her as a humanities teacher in Maryland. The case raises concerns about just how often background checks are completed on people with top security clearance. He's looked into every five years. They do a background check. It's incredibly extensive. If convicted, the couple could face life in prison. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. If you're just now waking up and you take 281 into the downtown area, heads up. That's right. It's kind of a mess there at 281 in Hildebrand. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Let's just dub today Messy Monday. I mean, that has been a mess on the roads this morning, and obviously people are probably getting a little bit frustrated if they're sitting out there in traffic right now. Uh, this is a shot at 281 at Hildebrand. If you're wondering uh, maybe what you're seeing out there this morning in terms of these delays with vehicles, that is because we do have a crash that did involve an 18-wheeler. And what we've been seeing here on the shot at Trans Guide is that the trailer is right now placed on the side. It looks like they are trying to top it over upright, but obviously it's going to be taking some time out there. And as we've been advising you, make sure that you are patient this morning. Grab that cup of coffee and pack that patience that is. And of course, make sure you are finding those alternative routes if this is where you travel this morning, because you can expect those delays at this hour. Taking you right to the map, uh, 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue. That is where traffic continues to just build and build a build. We've been talking about this throughout the entire morning now. So 616, it has been there quite a while. So again, make sure you are planning accordingly and not 
not too far, far from there. That is, we do have a stalled vehicle at Loop 410 eastbound at Broadway Street. That has been there for quite a while as well. So again, make sure you are checking those vehicles before you get on the highways. The last thing you're going to experience is any trouble out there, especially when there are more crashes that are popping up. And a new one just happened right here off I-35 southbound at Loop 1604. Obviously uh, not causing any delays at this hour, but keep in mind, we know more people are going to be getting out on the roadways, so this could impact traffic a little bit later, especially as we get clo closer to morning rush. Uh, but taking the wider look at the map, as we can take a look here, it's still pretty green and what we're seeing in a lot of parts, though, with the exception of 281 there at Hildebrandt, where we do have that trailer that they are trying to uh, op top over upright. But again, make sure that you are packing your patience this morning. Katrina Weber's been out there all morning long. She's shown us the delays that we've been seeing throughout the morning. So again, not a good sign and not a great way to start the week, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, well, not yet, but weather-wise, things are a lot different this week <laughs> than they were last week. Yeah, you know, we had rain what, a few weeks ago. Last week uh, was not raining at all, and very fallish, you know, at least starting off last week. And that's how we're starting off, actually, this morning. And that front that moved through overnight brought us some of that rain of just a, a, about an inch and uh, about an inch and an eighth officially out there at the airport. And most of that came within an hour. 63 right now. Dew point has dropped down significantly compared to yesterday. It's down about 10, 15, in some cases almost 20 degrees. Not much of a breeze right now, but we will continue to have a breeze out of the north primarily and 88 for a high temperature today. Comfortable still on the warm side of things by good four degrees or so, but boy, that's all going to be changing. Enjoy today. Love this picture. These asters for fall. Beautiful. Great color of almost a uh, uh, bluish purplish out there. So um, periwinkle, that's what I was trying to think of. Yes, Mark's favorite color. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so we <laughs> picked up a lot of rain very quickly in the overnight hours, primarily in the northern half of the area. Quit laughing at me. And uh, it was inch, two inches of rain. You know, some of these bullseyes here and here in town out at the airport, like I said, about uh, 1.15 inches. And then those pockets of an inch, inch, inch and a half here and there, most of it on the uh, the north side of town. So hopefully that would help out with the uh, with the aquifer. Humidity is low right now and it's going to stay that way throughout most of the day, but it's going to come back very quickly overnight. It's going to stay very humid throughout the middle part of the week and then drop off considerably by the weekend. We've got a great fall weekend in store, but we've got to get through the middle part of the week first of all. So here is the front that moved through in the overnight hours, and that is what has knocked the humidity out of the air. But down here in the Pacific Ocean, this is Pamela, and what that's going to do is move onshore, and it's going to throw all the moisture up in our direction. And the exact timing of it, computer models have come into a little bit more agreement that it's going to be late Wednesday overnight into Thursday when we see the brunt of the rain from this and most of it as it looks right now would be in portions of the hill country. But again, a little bit of a variation in the path of this and instead of maybe a couple of inches of rain, say here in town, it could be, you know, four to six inches of rain. So we're definitely going to have to watch the exact path of this. But right now it's looking like we're going to see potentially flooding rain primarily in the hill country. So today we're going to have lots of sunshine and then in the overnight hours, the humidity comes back in here. We'll probably have a couple of showers around the area tomorrow in the morning hours and then later on in the afternoon. A few of those scattered showers and thunderstorms, roughly the same thing on Wednesday. Then we get into especially Wednesday night, and that's when the heavy rain starts to fall in the overnight hours into Thursday. That will move on through here, and things are going to be clearing out, I think, fairly nice then once we get into Thursday, Friday, and the weekend, and we get that surge of cooler air and drier air coming in here. 82, mostly sunny skies today at noon. High temperature up to 88, so we are going to be on the warm side, but it's going to be pleasant with the low humidity. Humidity is going to come back in very quickly in the overnight hours, and uh, we'll have a couple of showers around tomorrow, but then especially late Wednesday overnight into Thursday. And right now it is shaping up to be a very good fall weekend. Folks were outside exercising yesterday over at Joyride over in the Elan Center off uh, Northwest Military. And it was to raise money for uh, wings. And that young lady right next to me there, I had the pleasure of emceeing this. Uh, she is going through breast cancer right now. She's one of the, the instructors there. But folks were outside pedaling away. And also with um, the smart bar, they had some exercise going on there in the afternoon as well. So it was riding bikes and then doing all that bar 
exercise. And again, it's for Wings. Wings is great. Local organization keeps the money right here. Helps out uh, folks going through breast cancer when they don't have insurance, and all you know helps them out financially. Spinning so. for a good cause. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to all the folks that came out there yesterday. And uh, a good turnout. That's yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, also, we want to mention congratulations to the SAPD SWAT team. We saw this on Facebook. SAPD took home the top prize at the Texas Tactical Police Officer Association SWAT Challenge. This is the third year in a row the SAPD SWAT team has finished yeah. in first place. Congratulations to the best of the best right here in San Antonio. Very nice. You ever met those guys? No, I have not. You know, a lot of times you think of SWAT as being, you know, the, the guys that are the size of grizzly bears and all that stuff. No, they're, they're smaller, but, I mean, just very, physical specimens. I say yeah. very fit, I imagine. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Congratulations again. 622, about 62 degrees. And coming up on GMSA, more on that toddler from East Texas who vanished and the person who found him. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. I do with less asthma. With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Oh, you guys. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. A three. So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, the Texas toddler rescue that's making headlines. A three-year-old found alive in the woods miles away from his family's home days after he went missing. Christopher, is that you? And then he, he, he speaks again. I'm like, whoa, you're like, praise God. The Good Samaritan who found him speaking out in an exclusive interview with ABC News. I don't know what to make of it. All I know is he was found safe when I picked him up. He was still talking, he wasn't shaking, he wasn't nervous. Well, you know, the things I would expect, I, I, maybe he just sensed I've been found. Landowner Tim Halfen retelling the moments leading up to when he found Christopher Ramirez and what reuniting the toddler with his mother means to him. Coming up at 7 a.m., new details about how the boy went missing and how he's doing this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Marcus Moore, ABC News, Houston. And time now is 626 and it's about 62 degrees out there. Instagram rolling out some new features aimed at protecting teen users. We'll have details coming up at 630. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, a busy morning on the roadways. And there's a look there at 281 at Hildebrand where crews are still working that crash. It looks to be a traffic mess. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. A big grid crash is now a big headache for drivers heading toward downtown on Highway 281. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll bring you the latest on this traffic situation coming up. Storms overnight, few clouds out there, but uh, rain cooled skies. It feels really good right now, but the weather forecast, let's say, say it is interesting with a capital I going into the rest of this week. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday the 11th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you have an extended weekend, I hope you're sleeping in. But if not, rise and shine. It's time to get up. And Mike has his eye on the forecast. Mm -hmm. Mike? You may have been awakened by some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms last yeah. night. Yeah, and right on schedule, even going back to late last week, that front was going to be coming through in the overnight hours, produced some rain in some cases, came down really hard and heavy out there at the airport, uh, just over about an inch and an eighth and roughly an hour. And now all that has ended. Roads are continuing to dry out somewhat. And we've got temperatures that are really pleasant. It's nice when you open up the door. Dew points at 61. That, uh, you know, it's on that 
threshold of noticing the humidity, but that's a whole lot lower than what it was yesterday. Right now we're at 63, about normal. No wind to speak of as of right now, but we're going to have a breeze primarily out of the north to northeast throughout the day. 66 Stinson, 63 Kelly, and uh, 64 at Randolph right now. And we've got mold and ragweed on the moderate side. Of course, the updated pollen count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. So rain will continue, and there may be a couple of leftover sprinkles off to the east, but there's hardly anything, if at all, showing up on radar right now. And we will start to clear out from west to east. And lots of sunshine today. Very nice day. Mid upper 80s, slightly above normal, but again, really comfortable, especially compared to yesterday when we had all that humidity. But the humidity is going to come back in here in here overnight very quickly. A couple of showers around tomorrow and Wednesday, Thursday, especially heavy rain is expected. That is going to be clearing on out and we have got a just fantastic fall weekend coming up here, but we got to get through the middle part of the week. First of all, details on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso has got to get through big incidents over there with that uh, tipped over 18 wheel, yep. right? And you know what? The roads may be drying out, Mike, but the problems just continue to pick up. Unfortunately, Monday morning commute off to a messy start on the roads. Taking a look right now, 281 at Hildebrand, the shot we've been showing you all morning long. Not something you see every day, just vehicles parked on the side of 281 like that, and that is because those first responders and crews are working to clear the scene of a big rig that tipped over there, and you can see from that shot of trans guide. We do have that piece of trailer that they are attempting to top over upright, but it is going to be a little while. And obviously from those shots we've been seeing from our Katrina Weber, it does show traffic just continues to build out there. But let's take a look at the map before we get to Katrina, because we are seeing the traffic building up there off 281 southbound right at Hildebrand Avenue. Again, pack that patience with a cup of coffee this morning because uh, this could be there for quite a while. Uh, but taking a look not too far from there, we still have that stall off Loop 410 eastbound at Broadway Street. Make sure you check those vehicles, but as we mentioned, the problems just persist on the roadways this morning. We want to take a jump up here to the northeast side. The crash now detected at Loop 1604 southbound right at Pat Booker Road. So again, the problems just continue and a little bit further down. We're going to do a little hop in here off US 90 east or westbound. That is at Couples Road, not causing as many delays with these other crashes that we've been seeing, but 281 is the big problem right now. But taking a wider look at our map, it is looking a little bit more active now that we are getting closer to the morning rush, but you can expect Expect right now these inbound times are still pretty green across the board, except 281 from Bulverde. We're looking right now at a 33 minute drive time, so a little bit unusual for this time of the day. But uh, 281 at Hildebrand again, that shot is where we have the big problem out there this morning, and that is where we find our Katrina Weber. Katrina, what's it looking like now? Well, Stephen, just as you said, the later it gets, the more traffic we're seeing on the access road. But let me show you what's going on here. Uh, at least a few signs of promise. We do have this tow truck here, and it appears to be uh, that it has attached to the front end of the big rig that crashed. It's pulling it up there to, to clear it out of the scene. But beyond here, under this bridge and on the other side of the bridge is a big mess. That entire trailer that the truck was carrying just broke open and everything uh, spread across the lanes of the highway. That's the reason that southbound 281 is closed at Hildebrand. But again, traffic backed up on the access road. It's being forced off the highway, taking the access road through the light and then getting back on the highway. Definitely a headache for the drivers, uh, especially as it gets later and there's more traffic out here. Uh, this is going to be going on for a while because I can assure you that even though this truck is about to be towed away. There's a big mess that has to be cleaned up, and this could go on for several hours. Uh, police do tell me that the driver of the truck did live through this and was taken to the hospital. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. One man is in the hospital this morning after police say he was attacked by two people with a knife. Happened just after 11 last night in the 900 block of Vance Jackson near 10 in Babcock. That's where police say two men on bicycles approached a man who was leaving a corner store and demanded money. The victim handed the suspects $10, but they demanded more money and attacked him with a knife before they took off. The victim was taken to a hospital with cuts to his fingers. Officers are still looking for those suspects. Stopping your morning headlines, Fort Hood officials say a soldier who was reported missing on Thursday has been found safe. That's according to our sister station, KPRC in Houston. Family members say private first class Jennifer Sewell is safe with her extended family. Right now, it's not clear how she was found. You can read more about this story on our website at KSET.com. 
More than 1,000 Southwest Airlines flights have been canceled across the country and dozens more have been delayed on Sunday. The Texas-based airline canceled about 30% of its schedule, according to FlightAware.com. As for here at home right now on FlySanAntonio.com, about 46 Southwest flights are listed as on time. Only four are listed as canceled. That could change. Among the hardest hit airports over the weekend were Dallas, Denver, and Phoenix. Southwest blames the problems, air traffic control issues and bad weather. Southwest Pilots Union blames airline management. Cleanup is underway after several reported tornadoes ripped through Oklahoma overnight. The severe weather system also brought heavy rain, lightning and wind to parts of Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri and Texas. According to local news outlets, a possible tornado struck Coweta, Oklahoma late last night, causing damage to a high school and homes, while a hailstorm earlier in the evening hit cars and businesses in Norman. No deaths or injuries have been reported. This morning, hundreds of thousands of U.S. military members remain unvaccinated as the Pentagon's vaccine mandate deadline approaches. According to the Washington Post, the rate of COVID-19 vaccinations among the armed services varies. For instance, vaccine compliance in the active duty Navy is around 90 percent, but for the Marine Corps, it's just 72 percent, though both services share the same November 28 deadline. Lowest overall rates of vaccination are in the Army Reserve and Army National Guard. They are both hovering around 40% vaccinated. Still, the Pentagon is optimistic that as the deadlines approach, most U.S. service members will carry out their orders to be vaccinated. Drug maker Merck is asking the Food and Drug Administration to authorize its COVID-19 medication. If cleared by the FDA, it would be the first pill to treat COVID-19 all other FDA-backed treatments require an IV or injection. It would be used to treat mild and moderate cases. A decision could come in a matter of weeks. Look for the latest on this story next on Good Morning America. And Instagram is introducing new tools to increase safety. The new features will prompt teens to take a break and will nudge teens if they're repeatedly looking at the same harmful content. It follows explosive testimony from a whistleblower to Congress last week. McDonald's saying thank you to teachers with free breakfast this week. It will come in a classic Happy Meal box. Teachers, school staffers and administrators can get the meal at participating locations by showing their work ID. And time now is 638 and it's about 62 degrees out there. How much do you know about retirement and will you be ready when the time comes? Just ahead, take our retirement quiz to find out. Welcome back 642 about 10,000 baby boomers will turn 65 every single day now through the year 2030. That means more and more people than ever will be retiring. The American College of Financial Services regularly tests people to see how much they know about retirement. And in 2020, eight out of 10 individuals failed that test. RJ Marquez takes a look at what you need to know. Are you ready to retire? How much do you need saved? When should you take your social security? The primary thing they should know is how much is my retirement going to cost me? Let's test your knowledge. A 65-year-old man has an average life expectancy of 10, 15, 20, or 25 more years. 20 more years. The correct answer is 20 years, but more than half of respondents underestimate life expectancy. Should you take your Social Security at 62 or wait until 70? Social Security was intended to represent a very small portion of your entire uh, your retirement income. For every year you delay taking Social Security, you will get an 8% increase in your benefit until age 70. But each person needs to consider their health and retirement lifestyle to determine whether to wait. And what about this one? Medicare typically pays for the cost of a nursing home for the first year? That would be false. Medicare does not generally pay for long-term care. Medicaid pays for nursing homes, and that only kicks in after your finances fall below a specific level. And one more, what proportion of the population will need long-term care at some point? The answer is 70%. Hopefully, we will all make it to a ripe old healthy age, but it's always good to be prepared. Finally, how much savings should you have to retire? The recommended retirement savings amount is up to four times your annual salary. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 
This morning, make sure you are taking it easy because we have a bunch of problems out there, but the big one we are watching and have been watching is right there at 2D1 at Hildebrand. Uh, it doesn't look like the scene has changed much. If you've been with us throughout the morning, this is what we've been discussing for quite a while now. An 18 or big, big rig that is looks like it had tipped over. Uh, we do see that there is a trailer that they are trying to turn upright, but something that you don't see every day are those vehicles that are just parked on the side there of 281 southbound, and that is because they are working to clear that scene out so that way traffic can move through there. But as Katrina Weber has been showing us all morning long, that track just continues to build, especially now that we are just minutes away from that morning rush. Check it out right now. 281 southbound at Hildebrand Avenue, just a stretch of red on those southbound lanes or in those southbound lanes. So again, make sure that you are taking it easy. If you're still at home, plan those alternative routes right now because it could be there for quite a while. So watching this crash there off loop 1604 southbound right at Pat Booker Road, we are seeing another build up there in those eastbound lanes of 1604 or something we are going to continue to watch throughout the morning. Some stalls just starting to be a pesky issue right now. Loop 410 northbound at East Houston Street, not causing any issues, but obviously could be a dangerous situation if uh, you are stranded on the highway. Uh, another crash there off US 90 westbound at Couples Road. Looks like it's not causing as many issues, but it has been a very busy morning here in the traffic lab, especially out on our roadways. And we do want to remind you again, if you see those flashing lights out there, make sure you move over or slow down. That is the law. You've been seeing it on those trans guide signs or text signs out there, but for now, let's go over to head over to Mike, who's got a festive shot right behind him. OK, once again, they <laughs> they did it. Look at that here. It's game day. Love that. Did you all notice earlier when we kept showing this the I guess that's like a pre <laughs> piranha, piranha. Maybe yeah. is that new? I don't know. I've never seen that one there before. Yeah, this is everybody nice. else there is repeat players. There's the, the, the little the one with the dog, so. Yeah. yeah, and clearly Eagles fans. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I was trying to figure out who that was, so. Hmm. Is this Max's house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got a couple little breaks in the clouds as of right now. Uh, more clearing off to the west. Rain has all come to an end. There may be a couple leftover sprinkles in uh, portions of, say, Gonzales County right now, but that's it. That was the last that was being detected on radar. The humidity has come down substantially from yesterday in behind the front that moved through overnight. And that's what touched off some of those showers and thunderstorms. And it's going to be staying fairly pleasant throughout the day. We'll keep dew point temperatures on the low side. So even though temperatures will be in the upper 80s, it'll be comfortable. That's going to change very rapidly overnight. We'll have a lot of humidity around tomorrow morning and then it's going to be sticking around and actually increasing throughout the course of the day tomorrow and into Wednesday. And that's going to be feeding some showers and thunderstorms. We'll probably have a few of them around tomorrow morning and then more in the afternoon. And then it really starts to come in here during the day, Wednesday overnight into Thursday and some of the computer models are estimating upwards of about six inches of rain in portions of the hill country and not obviously as much, maybe inch, couple of inches here in round town. But again, if this shifts over just the matter of a few miles, we could be seeing a lot of very heavy rain here in town. Lesser amounts off to the east. This is what it looks like, obviously, as of right now, but we'll keep monitoring over the next couple of days, obviously. So lots of sunshine today. Tomorrow morning, we have a couple of showers around here, a few more throughout the afternoon tomorrow. And then Wednesday, as we go in through the day, that's when the rain's really going to start to pick up, especially Wednesday evening overnight into Thursday morning. That'll be working its way across the area, but it's also looking Looking like it's going to be clearing out quite quickly and nicely even during the afternoon hours Thursday and that's going to set us up for a great great stretch of weather going into next weekend 82 degrees mostly sunny skies and high temperature today that's at noon and high this afternoon up to 88 tomorrow we will have well first of all starting off a lot more humidity in the morning and a couple of showers a few of them around throughout the afternoon and then especially on Wednesday and later in the day Wednesday Overnight into Thursday is when we can expect the very heavy rain. Friday looks like a really nice day and then drier, cooler, almost downright, do you say cold? I mean, 50 for a low temperature Sunday yeah. morning. More That's like be, fall. Yeah, great <laughs> fall weekend. But again, we're going to have to keep monitoring, see what the transpires coming up this week or this middle of this week. You, you were talking about earlier, Mike, all the ingredients are coming to place here for a rather concerning event. We've got a tropical system in the Pacific Ocean, which is going to be throwing a lot of moisture in up here and then also sort of a front working its way through. So that's going to be kind of the conduit for that moisture. And it's going to be coming down pretty hard and heavy. 
So again, Wednesday, right now, Wednesday night into early Thursday. All right, heads up, folks. Yeah. Right now, 649. Tomorrow on GMSA, our Tejano Moment series continues with a local author who's inspiring Latinos all over the world. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Well, this morning, lots of Cowboys fans talking Super Bowl this season because of the beatdown they've been handing their opponents so far. That includes the New York Giants, who were visiting yesterday afternoon. Cowboys win handily 44-20. Next up, Dallas has a road match with the New England Patriots. Speaking of the Patriots, they handed the Texans their fourth loss of the season and a close one yesterday. Pats win 25-22. Texans have a divisional matchup next week with the Colts in Indianapolis. Preseason continues over the NBA and our Spurs won a close one on the road against the Magic last night, 101 to 100. Spurs will host the Rockets on Friday to wrap up the preseason. San Antonio's regular season begins next week. Well, I'm glad the Spurs won. Also glad the Cowboys won. Not happy about the Longhorns, but hey, UTSA won as well. So there's some good games out of this weekend. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 62 degrees right now. We'll be right back. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. The sweet smell of incense is a great way to guide a soul back to the world of the living. It's also believed the smoke will elevate your prayers to God, purify your loved one's soul, and ward off evil spirits. An ideal location is on the bottom level beside other elements of purification. If you can find it, use copal incense. Made from a tree sap, its sacred scent can be traced all the way back to the ceremonies of the Mayans. Tell your loved one how much you miss them by lighting some incense. And hopefully your abuelita won't judge you this time. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live alongside Highway 281 near Hildebrand, the scene of some slow moving traffic and an even slower cleanup job from a crash that happened around four o'clock this morning. It was a big rig that uh, crashed, actually going, looks like it faces the wrong way here. Uh, the debris from the truck spread out all across the highway, causing this closure southbound 281 at Hildebrand. In the meantime, we have traffic backing up on the access road. They're being forced off the highway just before this exit and then going through the light and getting back on the highway. But of course, causing a big headache for drivers who were stuck in that backed up traffic. This is going on for the immediate future and for as long as we can see. It may take a while to clean it up because there's a lot of debris that's spread across the highway. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. You and Tim, be safe out there. And bringing you this shot at Transguide from that same exact crash, 281 at Hildebrand. As we can take a quick look here, we do have that other side of the trailer that shows that it is upright right now, or they're trying to get it upright. Obviously taking quite a while. As Katrina mentioned, the debris on the roadway could lead to a closure for quite a while. We'll continue to watch that, but traffic just continues to build there off 281 southbound at Hildebrand. We'll watch that closely throughout the morning, and we'll have all those updates on air and online. So stay with us for the very latest. This is going to be the big one out there this morning morning, Mike. Well, hopefully traffic's a little bit lighter since uh, schools are out and a lot of folks do have the day off for Columbus Day. We do have some uh, leftover clouds. Obviously, it's starting to break up somewhat. The rain overnight, about an inch and an eighth out there officially at the airport. 65 degrees right now, 58 Bandera and Comfort, 56 in Holotus. And we're going to see, uh, well, a gorgeous day today. A couple of showers tomorrow. Humidity is going to be okay today, but it comes back very quickly tomorrow. And then we're looking at heavy rain midweek. Thank you, Mike. Stephen, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us today and we'll see you back here at nine. Good morning America is next.